Previously a fabulously wealthy city, Constantinople was shockingly sacked during the Fourth Crusade in 1203-1204 and entered a period of decline. Charles always coveted Sicily as a means to pursue wider Mediterranean campaigns, including the overthrow of Constantinople. Constantinople was again part of the Byzantine Empire in 1261 and its influence was significant still on the trade routes into Europe. Sicilian resentment was prevalent throughout the rule of Charles I. Sicilian noble families had no influence nor any roles of wealth or power. All these posts were reserved for French or Neapolitans. Charles imposed heavy taxation on Sicily to fund his campaigns elsewhere. Campaigns which brought Sicilians no benefit whatsoever. Byzantine activists stoked Sicilian resentment as a means to prevent Charles's planned invasion of Constantinople. Equally, King Peter III of Aragon claimed to be the rightful heir to Sicily as he was married to Constance, the daughter of Manfred. The uprising began on Easter Monday, the 30th of March, 1282, at the Church of the Holy Spirit, Palermo. Sicilians were at the church celebrating Easter. A number of different stories circulate based on this notable occasion. Scenario 1. A group of French troops arrived and started drinking. A soldier named Drouet was being over-familiar with a married Sicilian woman in the crowd. The woman's husband stabbed and killed Drouet. The remaining French soldiers began to attack the crowd but were soon overwhelmed and killed. At this point, the church bells rang out for the Vespers. Scenario 2. A group of French soldiers were searching the crowd outside the church for weapons but used this occasion to grope the women. Scenario 3. There is a conspiracy theory that the uprising was planned between Michael VIII Palaiologos and Peter III of Aragon. All three were excommunicated by Pope Martin IV that very same year. Messengers spread through the island, making a call to arms against the French with the cry, death to the French, Morano li francesi. No Frenchman, woman or child was spared. Any Sicilian girls connected to a Frenchman suffered a similar fate. The rioters attacked the Dominican and Franciscan convents also. The foreign friars were forced to pronounce the word Chirici, chickpeas in Sicilian, but did so with a French pronunciation. On this basis, being French, they were killed. Through the night, 2,000 French died and the uprising now covered all of Palermo. New leaders were elected in Palermo. Messengers spread the call to arms to vanquish the French before they had time to respond. Within six weeks, Sicily was fully under rebel control, except for Messina, which was heavily armed and remained faithful to Charles. Eventually, rebellion entered Messina and Charles's fleet burned in the harbour. Under new leadership, the people declared themselves to be free and loyal only to the Pope, as were Venice, Genoa and Pisa. The Pope did not accept this communication. He excommunicated the rebels on the 7th of May. At this point, the Sicilian rebel leaders advised Emperor Michael 
that Charles I's government had been seriously damaged. The French Pope stubbornly supported Charles Anjou and refused their call to be free and repeated an instruction for the Sicilians to accept Charles as their rightful king. Sicilian hatred of the French, and Charles in particular, simmered. Charles was a remote ruler living in Naples and had no visibility of the vicious misrule of his officials in Sicily. Peter was invited to Sicily by the Sicilians after the Sicilian Vespers in 1282. Peter III built an invasion fleet prior to the Sicilian Vespers uprising. Outwardly, he said he planned to assert his interests against the North African coast. As the Sicilians requested Peter's assistance, his fleet was already moored nearby on the African coast. Peter was careful not to arrive too quickly, but arrived in Trapani on the 30th of August, 1282. His troops moved towards Palermo, shadowed by the fleet moving along the coastline. With this invasion, the uprising escalated from a local revolt into a European war. As Peter entered Palermo, the population saw him as a foreign occupying king, replacing another foreign occupying king. Peter I was crowned at the Cathedral of Palermo on September the 4th, 1282. Charles fled to Naples. Pope Martin IV excommunicated Peter and his financial backers for invading Sicily. With the Pope's support, Charles's fleet blockaded Messina, but repeatedly failed to land troops. Peter's fleet consistently beat off the Angevin attacks on Sicily. His navy defeated the French at the Battle of Malta and also at the Bay of Naples in 1284. Both Peter III and Charles I Anjou died in 1285. The Spanish aristocracy began to receive Sicilian land in return for military service. Sicilian wealth and produce was quickly transferred to Spain. James became King of Sicily and Aragon in 1285. This ensured that Sicily continued to subsidise Spanish interests. James II appointed his brother, Frederick III, as Viceroy in Palermo. Frederick grew up a Sicilian and agitated to become King of Sicily, which he did in 1296. Frederick spent most of his life fighting against Angevin Naples. The war with the Angevins devastated Sicily, and the Angevins at times attacked and then used scorched earth starvation policy on the island. Ultimately Frederick failed and made a treaty that on his death Sicily would go to the Angevins. Frederick was a poor leader who oversaw a period of decline and died in 1337. Whether there was an independent public uprising against Charles I in Sicily, in any case there were already foreign plans to unseat him. Calls for the unification of Italy and Sicily frequently referred to the Sicilian Vespers. The Italian national anthem, Lino di Mamelli, which is also known as Fratelli d'Italia, which translates to Brothers of Italy, also refers to the Sicilian Vespers.